Hi everyone! I thought I'd do a supplementary video here to show you first of all some of the resources that I use that are either free because they're from nature or they are something you can recycle and there's just so many of these kinds of things. I would never say that you absolutely need to buy anything and if you want to buy something just some simple counters where you can separate them into different colours and you can always put a little bit of magnetic tape on the back to make them magnetic. I'll show you that later. Okay, so let's get going. Depending on where you are in the world, of course, you will have seeds and these are uh, acorns. For anybody who's unfamiliar with them, you've got the cups and you've got the acorns themselves. So where I live, these are free and plentiful, brilliant for supertizing and something I'll show you straight away is if you use an old baking tray and then you drop lots of you've done this with me in the super subvertising challenge great noise as well you drop them it seems that oh oh that one can't make up its mind nature is amazing combined with physics because they tend to fall into ones twos and threes which if you've done the super subvertising challenge with me or if you're a Pathway Impact or Team Impact member, you will have access to that in your library. But can you see how great this is for saying, I can see one, I can see one, I can see one, and maybe conceptually subitizing, I can see three. That could be perceptual all in one, or it could be a child saying, I can see one and one and one, and I know that one and one and one is three, or a two and a one. So the earlier time, again, in this earlier stages, there's a two, and it's made up of one and a one. Here's another two. Look, it looks a little bit different to that two. Still made up of a one and a one. Here's a one and a one. But maybe they can relate to the fact that that one and one was two. And you can always do something that we call move it to prove it. So you move it up there, make it look like that one, and then move it back. So look, I'm proving that this whole amount is two. Put it back there, it's still two, even though it appears different. So you can do this with any of the resources I'm about to show you. So my next resource, unbelievably plentiful and either free or very cheap. So from a builder's merchants, um, the washed stones I showed you in the very first videos, you get huge sackfuls of these. And if you're going to do great maths and you're going to link maths in the four different ways that I'm showing you in video four, you need a lot of things because this isn't just about maths. This could be creating patterns through uh, using uh, loose parts, transient art. These, of course, can be used for make believe. You can pretend they're different things. You can even use them, of course, for creating digits, creating numbers and so forth and just playing, creating spirals and all sorts. Brilliant for patterning. Look at this link to our subvertising. So have a look at the pattern that I'm creating here. What do you see? How do you see it? Now you don't need to know, although you as an adult, let's make this a little bit bigger. You as an adult can easily see I've got three stones and then a black one, but you don't actually need to be able to label these stones to know that. You just need to be able to copy the pattern and a child that can see but not say the number name can still do this and the amount of conceptual and perceptual in here so perceptual would be seeing three that's harder to see in a line but you can see the two and the one or the two and the one and the one and the one and the one but you might real to reason i know it's three because there's a two and a one and a three but look pattern work using my hands manipulatives inside outside things they can do at home as well. It's, it's all the same things. And here, imagine, drop these from a height, keep the cognitive load low, so use all the same colours. So there's a bit of sorting going on there as well, just get the white ones, <laughs> drop them down on the baking tray. So what else can we use? Some of my favourites, the children absolutely love these as well because they are really nice to hold in your hand, they're heavy. So we've got these big bolts. Now, again, put out a plea for people to collect nuts and bolts and old bits and pieces from sheds and you'll get masses of this you don't need to buy it but exactly the same task dropping them down inside outside on your baking tray again you're patterning and what you're doing as well is teaching children that if that's a three for example made up of a two and a one and a one and a one and a one it doesn't matter if it's stones it doesn't matter if it's let me grab my acorns there we go 
And the thing to mention at this point is a lot of things that we use are approximately the same size. So be careful because that will create an overgeneralization that things have to be about this size. Use really massive things like tires and big slices of wood outside and hoops and use little tiny things like grains of rice as well or even lentils. And if you are in a culture that you don't feel comfortable using food then again just look for small things as long as you've done a you know a risk assessment to make sure they're safe for your children these things are brilliant so what else have we got well you know that you're getting really good at noticing i hope so all i do is is notice the things that are in my house so this was from christmas but actually christmas from years ago because i'm either a skin flint or i'm very very kind to the planet because I sprinkle these all over my table at Christmas and then I just gather them all up again. Um, and again, here's an example of, you know, sorting, noticing. So you could sort these first and then you could take them and drop them down. So really, really, you know, widely available, easy to recycle. And this was a pack I bought to make a Christmas wreath this year. And when I dismantled it, I also put this on my Christmas table. I thought, oh my goodness, I don't want to stick this in the cupboard till next Christmas because look at the potential. We were talking about changing the sizes. So look, first of all, sorting. You and I will do that very, very instinctively. There's lots of games and things we play in our uh, super subvertising challenge that we do in the autumn that those of you in Pathway and Impact and Team Impact have got in your library all the time. So you can go back to that. But if I sort these, again, really obvious to us. But look, you have got not only things that are very different, but again, you've got your subvertising. So here as well, I can see I've got three and one, or I could say I've got two facing this way, one facing that way, one facing that way. I can can you see how you don't need to count as an adult you don't you don't count you know that's two and you can see that that's one and that's one here we've got a few more I'm going to say straight away as a child or an adult I know that there's more than two there I know that because I can see two here I can also see two there I can also see two there and one there so whatever this amount is it's got a two and a two and a two and a one in it so can you see the way that we use this for calculation? This is what I'm talking about with these connections. So let's make some of those connections that we've done on the jigsaw. How much noticing is there here? Absolutely gorgeous. Yes, you can notice on a PowerPoint and don't not use your PowerPoint sometimes, but where's the fun in that? Where's the really good learning? We want to notice when we touch things, when we smell things, when we, you know, use all of your senses together. And these things, if we tell them they're delicate, most children learn to handle these very carefully. So we're doing our noticing. Then we've got our perceptual subvertising. I don't know how well these will work. We might not need the baking tray. That's there just to stop things flying away. So let's see what happens. Whoop. Okay, imagine I was gonna move them in so you can see. So here I've got a one and a one and a one. I might just move it to prove it a little bit here and see what I've got. Ooh. If I had a bigger space, I think these would have fallen further apart. So we've got a two and a two and a one and a one and a one. So we've got perceptual subvertising. You will get children who in time learn that this is four. And I know it's four because it's got a two and a two in it. And I know that, for example, that much and that much and that much, therefore, are not four because that's four and that's one more. And whatever that number is, this is one more than that number. And whatever this number is, it's one more than all of this. So there's so much good stuff going on here. We've got noticing, perceptual subvertising, conceptual subvertising. What happens if I add one more? So this probably, let's see, I'd, oh yes, I have got one that's the same. Right, I'm going to add one more to the set. So what I know now is there isn't the same amount as before. Even if I don't know what that number is yet, I've increased it by one. Can you see that's why counting doesn't make sense? Because if I went like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I've got seven altogether and it's my perceptual subvertising and conceptual subvertising that lead me to understand that the seven is all of them, not just that one. Now watch, add one more. What have you just called this? You've called it one. So if that's one, 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 and that's one. So it doesn't make sense 
if you count them and then suddenly call it eight because a minute ago it was one but of course with our supper tizing, we know it is one but it's all together it's one more than seven which is called eight and also in there we've got a two and a two and a two and ooh, there's a two let me move it to prove it so in this number and you, as adults we know this let's move it to prove it make it even easier this number eight has got a two and a two and a two and a two in it. Can you see you need that to understand division and multiplication? Two multiplied four times is eight and four, sorry, eight divided into four equal groups gives you two in each group and so on. So can you see, look on your diagram where I've helped you make these connections. Look at how we're looking at part whole, addition, subtraction. I've shown you how it leads to multiplication and division even fractions this bit here is one part out of four parts and that means this is one quarter so when they're older this is supporting that learning this is what they need so two out of eight parts is equal to a quarter four out of eight parts and four out of eight parts is equal to a half this is key stage two maths now this is above seven years old and onwards and it's the stuff that most children don't understand don't care about can't make sense of. So I hope that is helpful. I'm gonna show you one more thing. Okay, so again, getting away from everything being the same size, these are, and I, when I say same size, try and keep them the same size as each other, but these are, as you can see, bigger than my bolts and bigger than my stones, so children can generalize that regardless of how big it is, the maths works the same way. So let's have a look at this amount here. These are just slices of bamboo. So you can buy these or you can find someone with bamboo in their garden, which grows like wildfire, and uh, get them to chop it up for you. It's great stuff. This stuff is really hard wearing. You could probably stand on this as a child and it wouldn't break. But this is great for looking at amounts. So if we grab a, let's have a look. Don't get too excited. I know it's very beautiful. This is just literally a piece of wood. I got mine from the Outdoor Maths Company, but it's a piece of wood with some lines drawn on it. These are actually routed in, but you don't need to do that. So let's find out what this amount looks like on a 10 frame. Remember, this isn't five and 10 frame training. That stuff has happened before this training. So again, as I say, Pathway and Impact members, Team Impact, you've got it in your libraries. So here, if I put this on, I'm gonna put it on the fives pattern first. And we always have to talk or sing a little song, otherwise we'll end up counting as adults because we're used to doing it. But that is a full five and two of the next. I might not know what it's called yet, but I know what it can do. That's something it can do. It's a full five, two of the next five, and three not there yet. If I take it all off and use the twos pattern, again, chattering away or using a little song to stop me counting, we can see something completely different about this number. There are still three spaces not filled, because of course, conservation of number there, just move this along a little bit. But this time we can see twos in it and a one. So if I added one more from my bag, it's gonna change the picture. So this number is not the same number as that number. That number's got a name and that number's got a name. And of course the name in English is seven and the name in English is eight, but you're teaching children with multiple languages. So you can see it's what it looks like in relation to 10 is what counts. What it's called is the least important thing. What can it do? Well, it's got four twos in it. We saw that before with the orange slices. So we can do exactly the same with this, with the orange slices, and we can do exactly the same with the orange slices as we can do with this. You're gonna need a slightly bigger 10 frame, of course. So this idea here, how would, you know, how many more would I need so that it's full? So it's a full 10 frame. You can see perceptual subitizing. I'd need two. So eight plus two equals 10 or is equal to 10. And then let me get another 10 frame. What if I added one more? And those of you again who've done training with me, we get very excited about this. So now one finished 10 and one of the next 10, not just one more, one of the next 10. Look, it's a 10. So that is why, and don't squash them up together. I'm just doing that so you can see. That's why we write this as one finished 10 and one of the next 10. 
one of my favorite things to show you, which I'll finish on, and I'll do this both ways, is if I had four on here, and our children need to learn to recognize four as being there's one missing when it's on a five frame, that's a four. And also, of course, if you do it in the twos, move it up so you can see, four has got two twos in it. I'm gonna do it this way today because they meet five frames first. And the reason it's my favorite, or one of my favorites is, look, one finished 10, and four of the next 10. I know it's four because there's one missing and that will be five if I fill that in. And when we think about 14 and people tell us that teens are tricky numbers because we say the four first, they're not. They're only tricky if you say the word before you understand what it looks like. When you see, let me write it down. Okay, when we say, what do I see? One finished group of 10 and four of the next 10. That, those symbols there, that numeral we've created with these digits and that digit looks like this and that digit looks like this. And of course, place value is so important because if that one was here, it would just mean this. But because it's there, it means we've got one finished 10 already and we need to visualize that as adults as well as children. So the most important thing is what does this mean? What did these digits mean on how do we represent this amount? So that relationship between these is what counts. In English, it's 14. In Welsh, it's something different. In Chinese, it's something different. In Arabic, it's something different. Don't get hung up on the fact of whether we say 10-4 or 4-10, because like 14 meaning 4-10. 10-4 is not, of course, it, it's helpful in terms of understanding the structure, but don't kid yourself that the languages that say 10-1, 10-2, 10-3 are useful to children unless they've got this in their mind, which virtually no culture teaches mathematics visually like this. So can you see here, we've created 10-4, there it is, the 10 and the 4, and its name is 14. Like my name is Karen, but I would still be me if I had a different name. So I hope this has been inspiring. You've seen that having resources, you need loads of them. You need to think about the different sizes, but you need to think about free, recycled, donated, and lot, as I say, lots and lots of these things, because that is what's going to enable your children to use it across your provision. It is not about you just showing it on a PowerPoint.